Greetings guys, welcome back to my model railroad. This is Dan here and in today's video I'm going to be showing you guys how to model telegraph poles. As you can see above, this is one of the poles I've modeled in a small section on my layout looking east here. And the location I've modeled is Fostoy, Ohio along the BNO and the CNO main lines. And both these main lines were very old going all the way back to the steam era. And obviously telegraph poles would have been used along these lines for the communication, for signaling, and everything else back then. And a lot of these poles survived through the 2000s. Uh, a number of them have been cut down now. But the ones that I am modeling for the layout that I'm going to be showing you guys how to make are ones now that have pretty much been all but abandoned and are just sort of being eaten away by nature at this point. Uh, so they're going to be very beat up, a lot of bent poles, missing cross arms, missing insulators, uh, and it's all very simple to do using Rick's products telegraph pole kits. Uh, I like to use these because they're very simple in terms of being able to model them and fabricate them in any way that you choose. Uh, they're very easy to work with, the kits are great, they're affordable, and you can do so much with them. Uh, they come with some basic wood grain detail, uh, the basic insulator detail on the cross arms is pretty good, and they come with some other nice little details, uh, different pole lengths of course. Uh, so they're very good for modeling these realistic telegraph poles along the main line. So I'm going to be showing you guys how I model mine uh, and doing some slight detail work to them, modifying the cross arms by removing insulators, for example, and of course wiring them. And setting them into the scene, uh, blending them in with the scenery, making them look like they've been there for many, many years. So let's go ahead and jump into this video. Uh, this is going to be an exciting little look into another aspect of modeling. So these are the Rick's poles. These are the ones I at least have, and I have just enough here for the uh, layout scenes that I need to complete. Uh, this is the pack, this is how they come, they're super cheap and you can get 30 or 40 foot poles uh, and then of course they have packs of just cross arms uh, these are honestly the best in the market for sure because they're relatively detailed, the cross arms have nice wood grain detail, the insulator detail is pretty good um, it's all one style of insulator but you know, what company is going to sit there and model a, in, you know, a telegraph pole with five different kinds of insulators even though it's prototypical but it's all right we can make these work so anyways uh, you get the long taller poles and then you have the shorter poles and the particular poles that I'm going to be building today are going to be the smaller ones so I'm going to be using these um, to match up with what I need on the layout but these details are great because you can add as many cross arms to them as you like you can do all kinds of crazy stuff if you want to really get crazy you can even build your own with some of the parts I made this guy here I'm not sure where I'm going to put it but I made this as a interesting little uh, depot for multiple wires to come down to a relay cabinet. I had this on a few modules and uh, I'd like to use this on the layout eventually but I'm not really sure where yet. Anyways, there's all kinds of cool stuff you can make. You can do all kinds of different types of cross arms uh, arrangements and things like that. You can see I have an old style here. Um, a lot of these that I had on the layout right now I'm going to be scrapping. So I have some scrap ones. I'm going to be reusing the cross arms on these for layout. But you get quite a few of them, and really you just go to town. I mean, you just go in, and what I like to start doing first is I'll just cut out a few cross arms to get started, and they come in a large sprue, as you can see. So what you do is you just cut the cross arms out. And that'll get you started. You can use either plastic cement or uh, super glue to actually glue these. So they're really nice and they give you a lot of freedom to be able to model exactly what you want which is exactly what I want uh, to be able to model very specific poles uh, for my little yard section that I'm working on so I have a few that I've already cut out and again like I said I'll glue these but uh, if you don't like the wood grain on the pole I will mention uh, you can also use a little bit of sandpaper or you can use one of those exacto razor saws to go in and actually add some more wood grain to these if you like. The key thing, and as I showed on the layout, I don't like perfect pulls. You want to make these look really beat up. Cut insulators off the cross arms, for example. Uh, have crooked cross arms. That's another big one. The cross arms have a tendency to lean over time uh, as more wires are removed or, of course, pickers go up there and steal insulators. A lot of times the cross arms will bend. Um, so there's all kinds of little things you can do there. Let's go ahead and start assembling some of these. So the poles I'm modeling are pretty beaten up. Uh, a lot of times you see the insulators get stolen or removed as they uh, continue to go out of service. 
So, another thing you can do to these is bust up across arms. Just make them look crooked. What I'll do is I'll use a little bit of plastic cement and I'm going to glue this to the pole that I already have here from a refugee project. And you, uh, you might need to um, add a little bit more glue. This one's not wanting to stick here, but that's fine. It can be a little crooked too, that's perfectly fine. Just let it sit and then move on to the next one. The next one here, we got the same thing, so what I'm going to do, come in like that, add the glue. I got a full cross arm here with all the insulators, throw in some variety here. Let's go ahead and Glue that on, like that. It can be a little crooked again too. Just like that. I like that. Okay. And then just for fun, let's cut off most of these insulators on this one. All right? And we're going to just put one cross arm on top here to make it look like the middle arm on the other side of this got busted off. Now dual cross arms on both sides, that's another common thing you see. A lot of pole lines have double cross arms, so this is another one of those things that's easy to model. All you got to do is just add the first row of cross arms and then a second to the back. And then here you can see I just kind of roughly line them up, make it look kind of crooked. Voila. And then of course once this dries up I can go back if I want to and cut these insulators off. In terms of painting, uh, I do like to spray the entire pole with a dark brown sometimes. Other times I'll leave the poles like they are. Uh, you can of course paint the little cross arm brace members. Uh, those would just be silver. However, I recommend you keep these a brown color too because it looks rusty. Uh, insulators usually white, green, dark green, um, gray to represent porcelain insulators. Uh, those colors generally work for these. Uh, I do not paint the insulators just because in my case where the poles are they're so hard to see that you can barely notice uh, the color of the insulator. So like I said I just work on a couple of these at a time. I build them assembly style or assembly line style. Just put them together and then I transfer them out to the layout and if I want to add like guy wires, uh, utility boxes, or anything like that, ground relays and stuff, I can do that. Uh, but these are great because you can just have you know so much fun modifying and changing them. You can model busted cross arms. I mean, you can go in and model cross arms that have busted wood where it's just splintered like that, for example. You can do all kinds of stuff. These are so much fun to play with. This is what they look like. You can see they're nicely beat up. One other thing you can do, you can bend your poles a little bit with a pair of pliers. It's a simple thing to do. And, of course, the cut cross arm member. That's always another nice little idea. I like to add bits and scraps of wire to look like cut wires to these sometimes. Uh, you can just really go in all kinds of detail with these if you really want to. But, again, these are background details. Uh, as long as they have the essential details that I want to see, that's what matters to me. Um, I'm not going to paint the insulators on these, but you can of course do that if you'd like. Uh, it does make them look really nice. Again, there's a couple examples here of ones where I did take the time to paint them, and they do look really nice. I will say the green needs to be a little bit darker than what I used on these though. Uh, you wanted a very subtle dark green. I also should mention uh, that Ricks does make uh, poles with uh, clear glass and green glass. Uh, however, with those, the insulators look nice, but you got to paint the poles. But that is another option you can use if you'd like. Here I have installed the poles into the foam, and this is on the back section of the layout. And one of the things I want to point out here is how I've actually buried these poles in the weeds, in the shrubs. And this is something you see a lot of times, especially on uh, areas of mainline like this. Uh, especially in the real CNO yard, which is what I'm modeling here, uh, there's a lot of this shrub material, a lot of trees and stuff growing around the tracks, or at least track side, and so these poles have kind of been enveloped in this brush. 
And you can see I've carefully inserted the poles in this brush. So I've glued all of the scenery stuff down first and I drilled a hole through it, then inserted each individual pole at a specific length, roughly about a foot apart, and inserted them in. Now in an open scene like this, I did not. I just left it open like this, but I will plant a few weeds around it. Another thing you see commonly on these poles is vines growing up them. So that's another thing you can model. Now something else I want to point out here, notice I've put a, another pole right next to it, or at least one that has been cut down. This is something that you see out there a lot. Uh, it represents an older pole, one that was put in years before this one was, uh, that had been cut down and then replaced with another pole right alongside it. And sometimes they just leave these stubs like this. So that was something I wanted to model here because it is something that you see in the real scene in Fosfory, Ohio, along the main line. Now, obviously these poles will get some wiring. Sorry about that. I will put two lines each representing the signaling line on all of these and it'll be on the top holes. Um, but the material you use to actually wire these up is Berkshire Products line, Easy Line. Uh, this stuff's been in the hobby for quite a number of years now and it's a fantastic product because it maintains and holds its stretch unlike string or anything else. Uh, fishing line I heard works pretty well too. Uh, but I always use Easy Line from now on. Uh, I used to use thread. Easy Line is so much better because it stays taut. You can see it stays nice and airy and it doesn't get all weird. It doesn't like kink up or anything. It stays taut and in position. You can see it's nice and loose, but it holds that proper sag, representing like it has weight, uh, just like the real wiring. So I like to use that material and I will be using that on these pieces of, uh, or the section of code line rather. Other little details you got to remember to put alongside are little relay boxes, little trackside cabinets and things like that. Old signal relay boxes like that generally went along with these poles and sometimes on those poles you saw a lot of conduit, you saw guy wires coming off of them, you had other little uh, little circuits and stuff mounted onto the telegraph cross arm beams. So there's all kinds of little things you can make. I didn't represent it here but uh, we have the hint at a detail like that here with this little cabinet. As another example, you can see I actually added a little circuit box to this pole here. That's just a Walther's piece uh, from a detail kit. I just glued that onto the pole, and then in this case, the wiring has all been cut off. You can see a lot of the insulators are smashed off or just completely missing altogether, leaving just the pole. And you can see I've actually left the cut wires bunched up and hanging off this pole. This is something you can do to an old telegraph pole that really adds another level of detail to it. It looks incredible when you do it. And it's those small details, that's what people notice, that are like, wow, I've never seen that model before. But yeah, that's right, that's what you see out there. And I like those effects. I like the idea of having these cut wires. Again, there's another old pole base left right there in the weeds, while the newer pole has been left alongside it. And that goes for all these down, which have all been wired. And this is showing the Berkshire Products line after it's been glued in. You just use a little super glue or canopy glue, tack it on there and then you just stretch the wiring down. I prefer the super glue just because it's fast. Uh, you tack it on real quick and then you can take off from there. And then you can go one pull at a time and get quite a number of these done relatively quickly. Other details I like to make are how they usually will dead end pole lines or chop down poles after a certain point. And sometimes you see them just leave the old poles up but they'll take the cross arms off like they've done in this case here. Uh, that's another cool little thing I like to try to model and I've replicated it here on the turnout here in the southwest corner of the layout. And it's just another cool little detail you can do. Uh, you can see they're nicely blended in here into the weeds and the trees. There's obviously tons and tons of methods of modeling these poles and it's totally your choice how you would like to model certain detail effects on these. Uh, if you want to go in and do more painting, a little bit more weathering or a little bit more uh, detail work to the poles themselves, you can of course do that. Uh, this is just how I personally do them, and this is just the way I like to install them on the layout. Uh, I'm not telling that uh, this is how you should do them, this is just my personal method of modeling them. Uh, of course, if you guys want to leave suggestions, you can do that in the comments. Uh, I do appreciate that sometimes because it allows other users to read the comment section and get some other ideas. Uh, this is a learning hobby, and other modelers have other ideas and other ways of modeling this kind of stuff. And no one way is the right way. There's multiple ways you can do this kind of effect. So I'm just going to leave you guys with this here, and hopefully this inspires you guys to try some of these techniques on your layout or scenery diorama. 
Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.